The scripture today is Luke chapter 1, and it's from verse 39 to 45. I'll read verse 39, and you read 40, and we'll read verse 45 together. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea. Here she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. As soon as the sound of your greeting reaches my ears, the baby in my womb reaches for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. sermon is about Mary and Elizabeth and their meeting, and it's also about John the Baptist and Jesus, and we see a pair of mothers, and we also see a pair of infants, and, and when we look at these, um, these two, these families, I want to talk about um, comparing. And what does this sermon have to do with, with comparing? Um, in the book of Proverbs, there's a kind of parable that, that compares. In Proverbs chapter 15, verse 16, better a little with the fear of the Lord than great wealth with turmoil. Better a small serving of vegetables with love than a fattened calf with hatred. Or Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. See, in these Proverbs of Solomon, two things are compared. Um, uh, sometimes what we see on the outside um, is easy. We can see a general conquering a city. But Solomon, he said, a patient person is better. Um, this feast in Proverbs chapter six, 15, verse 17, this feast might show a person's wealth on the outside, but Solomon says, a little with the fear of the Lord is better. You know, sometimes these comparisons are with something that's good and something that's bad. Sometimes these comparisons, um, Proverbs 17, 12, better to meet a bear, bear rubbed of her cubs than a fool bent on folly. It's not good to meet a bear that's running after you. Mm. But Solomon says it's worse to meet a fool being foolish. Mm. Um, Proverbs 19.22, better to be a poor person than a liar. Mm. Well, we really don't want to be a poor person. Mm. But Solomon says it's worse to be a liar. So, so why am I talking about comparing things? You know, people, sometimes we need to compare. And in the Bible, and in today's sermon, we have Jesus and John the Baptist and their infants. Um, the last time I can remember two infants in their mother's womb is in Genesis. Genesis chapter 25, verse 22. And Rachel was pregnant with her two sons. 
And in Genesis chapter 25, verse 22, it says, The children struggled together within her. See, and here, here in John chapter 1, verse 44, the infants are at the center of attention. John 1, 44, John the Baptist and Jesus, as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Oh, Jesus and John the Baptist are at the center. They're, they're at the center of all this joy, yet they're in their mother's womb. And Genesis chapter 25, verse 22, two boys in their mother's womb struggled together within her. And maybe we're comparing two sets of infants, two generations. These brothers, Jacob and Esau, Genesis 25, 22, the children struggled. The word struggle in Hebrew, it literally means they were smashing each other. Oh. They were fighting each other as hard as they possibly could. <laughs> and Rachel says, if I'm to bear these two boys that are smashing each other inside of me, Ra Rachel asks this question, if, if it's so, why am I in this condition? If I have these two brothers inside of me and they're in so much conflict. But here, John 144, we have two infants, John the Baptist and Jesus. And Luke 144, for behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leapt in my womb. Um, Jacob and Esau were born to conflict. John the Baptist is born to joy. Jacob and Esau are this generation that are born to conflict even from their womb. John the Baptist is this generation born to joy. So, what's the beginning? How do we know this? What's the beginning of this generation of John the Baptist born to joy? How do we compare this to this generation in Genesis of two brothers born to conflict? Genesis 25, 22, two boys fight in the womb. Luke 1, one child leaps for joy in the womb. What's the beginning of all this? Now, when we're in Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 1, verse 2, Luke says, I looked for eyewitnesses. Um, Luke 1, 2, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. See, the resurrection of Jesus has many witnesses. The ministry of Jesus and his miracles have many witnesses. Yet when we come to Luke chapter 1, verse 44, there's only one witness. There's only one person 
who could give this information so personal. Um, uh, Acts chapter 21 verse 17 when they had come to Jerusalem the, the brethren received us gladly. Um, let's see. Actually it says when we Acts 21 17 when we had come to Jerusalem Luke is one of these people in this we Luke is one of these people who came to the church in Jerusalem. And the church received Luke and Paul. But Mary would be part of this Jerusalem church. Mary would be in her 60s or in her 70s when Luke visited in Acts 21, 17. Um, Luke chapter 1, verse 44. For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. Who would know this? Who would know this child's proclamation and be able to tell you, Luke, who would know of a baby leaping in Elizabeth's womb when she was just one month pregnant? See, Mary, she might have told someone else, and that other person might have told Luke. But Luke, he wanted eyewitnesses. Just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Luke wanted eyewitnesses. And Mary is the only eyewitness of this meeting. Luke chapter 1 verse 39, at that time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea. Only Mary knows I hurried. Only Mary knows I rushed. So, we, we might not see a time but an old woman, Mary, is talking about a time when she's young. We might not see a time when an honored woman, Mary, is talking about a time when she's embarrassed. Luke chapter 1 verse 39, at that time Mary got ready and hurried. So, so if this is a comparing sermon, Jacob and Esau, brothers born into conflict. John the Baptist is tied to Jesus by joy. And Elizabeth and Mary are tied together by peace. Elizabeth is, is too old to be pregnant. Mary is too young to be pregnant. Elizabeth is surprised because God came too late. Mary is surprised because God g came too early. But Christmas, Christmas is about God who is far away coming close. God should keep a chasm 
Yet God made a bridge. You know, the, the resurrection has many witnesses. 1 Corinthians 15, over 500. But the virgin birth has only one witness, Mary. And holiness says there should be a chasm between God and men. Yet Luke chapter 1 verse 35. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Luke 1.39 Why is Mary rushing in a hurry to see Elizabeth? Because Mary knew she would find peace. Elizabeth heard Mary because she was prepared for peace. God prepared Elizabeth. The angel, in making this Annunciation to Mary, Luke 1 36. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, also has conceived a son in her old age. This is now the sixth month for her who is called barren. Elizabeth heard Mary because she was prepared for peace. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Um, Elizabeth is the only one who understands the peace that Mary carries within her. Elizabeth understands the peace that Mary will proclaim to her. Luke 1.37, with God nothing is impossible. Because God came close. God's peace came to Elizabeth and gave her a son. God's peace came to Mary and gave her a savior. Both Mary and Elizabeth understand God has come close and God gives peace. So, in our comparing, John the Baptist, the son who was called to joy with Jesus, the sons were called to joy. The mothers carried a message of peace. Mary is the first person to keep this command, Luke 12, 8. Whoever acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. Mary is the first person to say, God came to me with peace. 
And like Mary, we remember that Christmas makes us messengers of peace. The king that we herald, Isaiah 9, 6, is the prince of peace. Um, God gave Mary peace because Christ, her son, is the only source of peace. God embarrassed Mary because she's not married, she's a virgin, yet she carries the son of peace. I'm not embarrassed. Romans 1.16 I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is a message of peace. So, Luke chapter 1 verse 40 She entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Christmas is a proclamation of joy. Christmas is a proclamation of peace. And like Mary, we as well say, I'm not embarrassed to carry a message of joy. I'm not embarrassed to proclaim a message of peace. Romans chapter 1 verse 16 and 17. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. And by faith we proclaim a message of joy. We proclaim a message of peace. Um, God works in us to make us a messenger of peace. So, if we saw two infants, Genesis 25, 22, but the children struggled together within her, and these two infants are born in conflict, and then we see at Luke 1.44, two infants who are born to joy. For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leapt in my womb for joy. Um, so, so we got these three pairs, Jacob and Esau, a generation born in conflict. Mary and Elizabeth, two mothers, carry a message of peace. And Jesus and John the Baptist, even as infants, are a generation who have found joy and peace. Jesus, from his mother's womb, gives joy. John the Baptist, from his mother's womb, finds joy. How do we go from war to peace? How do we go from strife and conflict to joy? Um, 
Romans chapter 9, verse 11. For the children, not yet being born, not having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him who calls. See, four people in our sermon have not been born. These four boys at the center of this sermon not yet being born. Jacob and Esau, not yet being born, are, are bent on strife. Yet John the Baptist, hearing Jesus, not yet being born, has found joy. What is it that this unborn infant has found that we have not? Um, Jacob and Esau are twins. They're divided. They fight. We as well struggle. We sin. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 20. There is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is at enmity with God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. See, Jacob and Esau are two people, but they're one. They're both sinners in their mother's womb. Jacob and Esau are all of us. We are all born to sin. We are all born to conflict. Romans chapter 8 verse 7. The carnal mind is at enmity. It wars with God. Is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. We are born hopelessly hostile to God. It will not do. Will I be a better person? Will I be a worse person? God knows us all our days. God knows all our good days. God knows all our bad days. From before we are born. Romans chapter 9 verse 11. For the children, not yet being born, not having done anything good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not by works, but by him who calls. See, when we see John the Baptist in his mother's womb, not having been born. John the Baptist hasn't done anything. He's not baptized a single soul. 
He's not preached a single sermon. He's not read a single verse of scripture. But in John the Baptist, infant in his mother's womb, God's purpose prevails. Not by works, but by him who calls. God's love makes a, God's love calls us. Luke 1:44 For behold, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby leapt in my womb for joy. This infant had joy. This infant had peace. This infant found not himself, but God who calls. This infant found not himself, but God who gives peace. Peace that this child could not earn, but which God, for his own glory, his own goodness, came close to give. This infant, in finding God's goodness and providence, rejoiced only in God's goodness and providence. Faith and admitting our inability, Romans 8, 7, the carnal mind is at enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. In admitting our inability, we find God's possibility. God gives John the Baptist, this infant, his first small witness before birth. Luke 144, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. God gave John the Baptist a small six-month-old infant to remind us that God's salvation is God's gift and God's call and God's grace and for each man who finds it, we look not to ourselves. Romans 9.11, not by works. We look to him who calls. Christmas is about God coming close. Christmas is about God's bridge. The, the children of Adam, Jacob and Esau, born to conflict, born to strife. But God brought his bridge into the world. God makes his call to the world, and God comes close. Luke chapter 1, verse 43. Why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Mm. 
Jesus is only 30 days old. And yet Elizabeth says, why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord, yet being one month old, why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Why would John leap at Mary's voice? Does Jesus, a month old infant, have a mouth to speak with? But Jesus is God's bridge. Jesus is God's peace. Jesus is God's call. Jesus is the joy of God inside Mary. Jesus is the truth of God that chose Mary. In God's wisdom, God embarrassed Mary. But in Jesus is the wisdom of God, the call of God, and the peace of God. And by faith, the infant John the Baptist was given this peace by God. Jesus has no lips to speak with, he has no eyes to see, he has no ears to hear, he is probably smaller than my thumbnail, yet he is joy. Romans chapter 11, verse 32. For God has bound all men over to disobedience, so that he may have mercy on them all. Romans eleven thirty-two. Like Esau, we are all disobedient in heart. Like Jacob, we are all covenant children, hearing God's offer of mercy. And God calls. Jesus is the call of God. God himself is the bridge with which he comes to each of us. And each of us, we hear God's call, we find God's peace, and God's grace comes near and invites us Romans 11.32, that he might have mercy on all. So this Christmas season, and if we've been making comparisons with this sermon, what's better and what's worse? Well, Jacob and Esau were brothers born to conflict. And as sinners, we all have conflict within ourselves. We struggle with God, to love God, to want God, to know God. And John the Baptist, before he was born, was born to joy. 
God calls each of us to his joy. God calls each of us to his peace. The generation of conflict born with Jacob and Esau gives way to the generation of peace. Those who, by faith, faith in Christ, even as a one-month-old infant, find God's peace, find God's joy. It's better to find God's peace than to walk in our own ways. It's better to find God's call than to walk in our own desires. Elizabeth and Mary, both embarrassed, embarrassed because God came close. Elizabeth was too old to have a son, but God gave her a son. Mary was too young to have a son, but God came out of time. But God came close to them. God made Mary and Elizabeth messengers of peace, bearers of peace. This Christmas season, remember that the gospel we give is a message of peace. Mary went to Elizabeth because she knew Elizabeth would hear her message of peace. Elizabeth was prepared for Mary because God came to her with peace. Let's not be ashamed to share peace with others. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. It's written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. With the same spirit of faith we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one ra who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. And this third pair of Jesus and John the Baptist. Jesus is the grace of God. Jesus is the call of God. God loves you. God shows he loves you because he sent Jesus for you. God bears his witness of his love and his mercy for all men. For even though we are disobedient, God in his love gives his call. And his call is this infant child, Jesus Christ, the bridge, God's peace through which he calls all men. May we each enter that call as God our Father desires us to. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your call. Even though we are sinners, um, quicken our hearts to know you and to know your Son, Jesus Christ. He came to die for our sins. He came to give us life. He came to live in our hearts. Father, work in our hearts. 
as you love us and have shown your love through Jesus Christ, may we find the joy that John the Baptist rejoiced in, it, even in his mother's womb. May we find your call coming to us, working in us, and saving us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.